There you go. Uh, we'll open the meeting here at 6.30. And uh, sorry for walking in right at uh, 6.29. But, um, so anyways, we you, we do roll call usually virtually here. They will take a roll call for us. Um, public comments, is there any public comments? Not, I have not received any public comments. Okay. Have there. We have approval of the minutes from December of 23. Are in your packets or message? Has any comments on them? If there's a uh, motion to approve the minutes. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from December of 2023. All right, motion on the floor. Second? A second. All right, it's been seconded. Motion uh, made, seconded. All those approved, say aye. 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 Nays. No extensions. All oh, stayed. Yeah, nice. Because I wasn't on the board. Yeah. Well, that's right. You were here, here, but you were just as an attendee. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. All right. Motion passed on that. Um, any shout outs from the board? Anything anybody wants to bring up from uh, going on in our communities or anything? Nothing going on. <laughs> pretty, pretty much same old, same old. It's good January. I was yeah. kind of surprised. January is normally not. Right. Um, my new landlord's taking care of the landscaping very nicely. Just had the trees trimmed. She's getting a bid on restracking the parking lot. Excellent. So, I didn't know you had excellent. a new landlord. So the building sold? I, I wasn't aware of it. The owner's divorced. Oh. <laughs> so they kind of Okay. Yeah. She yeah. hadn't been involved before and now she's all over it. Yeah. So, huh? and, and you're, you're like, Everything seems to be good, so can't complain. Yes. Are doing a potluck for Super Bowl this Sunday. If anybody has no place to be. Yeah. One thing I'll mention is the Christmas lights. I think this is our first meeting since Christmas, so that was all that seemed to go pretty well. Yeah. And you know, we put lights up on our building, a lot of the buildings did as well. So it was pretty cool to see. Yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. I, you know, the year before was the first year we've done it. So it's great to see it expand, but also you know flourish too, and, and see people get excited about that in our community and outside of our community. It's got some attention, and hopefully, in future years will bring in that. Chris, yeah, I think there's like five thousand more people that attended this year versus last year. Mm -hmm. Last year was seventeen thousand. This year was twenty three thousand. Mm -hmm. Those numbers don't write them down, but I think that's <laughs> wow. That's How a that? that's a zero. Yeah, somebody was counting. Yeah, yeah there were several people counting actually, and that. Uh, I'll say that stock and stroll was a huge success. Uh, I, I worked out at St. Paul and we were really impressed with the amount of people. What was that? The stock and stroll? I didn't hear that about that one. Oh, so it's like uh, the trick or treat trail with Christmas. Oh. <laughs> and so uh, we got about, I think it was about 50 businesses. Um, you know, I'm getting old and this cold weather. Oh, it was at night. So you weren't running. Yeah. No, I, um, you know, I've never been to Arizona, but it's starting to feel nice thinking about that in the middle of the winter. I did go at, at night with my family, extended family, and came in. I don't know if there was, any, there was no one there to count us, <laughs> um, unless you had an automatic, you know, walk through counter. But yeah, they had a lot of fun. Yeah. Can I also say just, um, you know, on, on behalf of the economic development department, um, that was such a great idea that the council came up with. And uh, I mean, I couldn't think of a better way to promote saying, so thank you. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate, appreciate you guys making that a priority. That was fantastic. Yeah. And bringing in uh, people to our community because that. The park gets used a lot in the summer, but to have something that could be used in the winter time frame and as it's sitting there is, mm -hmm. you know, it's supposed to be even bigger this year. So anyway, great, great deal. Any other shout outs we have? Anything fun on the planning commission that we should know about? Um, no, I think we're doing town plan review. You're the chair? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm the chair. Hello, everybody. By the way, I'm Darren Wagner. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We <laughs> have you not been here with it, or was it just the interview? I'm. Yeah, yeah this is my first meeting. I apologize. I thought you were here as well last time. So no, I tried Should to you... attend online, but there's a, a problem with the meeting that wouldn't let me in. Oh. Um, so sorry, I missed that last meeting. But uh, I own Wagner Travel and Cruise in Town, but I'm also the chair of the Planning Commission, um, which is pretty historic because Jerry, amazing, I love Jerry, has been the chair for. 30 years just about <laughs> when I was on planning commission yeah so uh yeah so it's exciting uh I mean with the moratorium it's been pretty quiet overall but we're looking at a lot of the same stuff uh, that you guys are uh and we just kind of went through a big block code change approvals so um I don't know how much effect that'll have here but it was 315 pages of excitement <laughs> all right and Mr. Chairman uh Chris Jenkins writes here. oh hi Chris well, why don't we do um, a uh, break and let's go around and introduce ourselves. I apologize. I thought we had already done that at the last meeting. Uh, and obviously, I missed that from either doing interviews or already knowing that. So, uh, just so everyone in the room and we got some audience and people on, on uh, line there. But uh, Jeremy Pietzel, I am the chair of the Economic Development uh, Advisory Board. And I'm Bill Schwartz. I own the Boring Brewing Company. Darren already introduced himself. <laughs> uh, Marcel Bracci and my family owns AEC, a tech, well, technical writing company in, in Sandy, and also the building there between Double Dragon and the Denny's. My name is Darren Ferguson. I work for Trimble Rentals. Uh, Chris Mayton, I'm City Council C1. I also sit on this board and I sit on the Planning Commission board as well as a liaison. And our audience here. I'm Rebecca Hansett. I'm a team librarian for the City of Sandy. And I'm Monica Smith. I'm the children's librarian for the City of Sandy. All right. We do have some people on, on there on the line here. If you don't mind introducing yourselves. And David, you want to call their names out because the screen's sideways. I can't. Yeah. First, well, first of all, our board member, Chris. Chris Jones, Sandy Area Chamber of Commerce. And then uh, we have uh, Beth Nicole. Beth, you know Beth Goodman with Echo Northwest. We'll be talking in uh, in a few minutes with you. Hi, and Nicole Underwood with Echo Northwest. Well, great. Thanks, everyone. We don't usually get audience members or guests <laughs> coming in and speaking. Uh, so it's great to have you. And I apologize for uh, uh, not doing that earlier. But um, well, let's move on because um, I, I keep a tight ship and get us out by eight. So um, that's uh, any economic development updates that you want to give us? Um, not that I can think of right now. Schools being, uh, you know, demolitions are starting uh, over on the same community campus. Uh, I don't know if you guys have done this. Air cool is mostly down now, and uh, building one for uh, Cedar Ridge will uh, start. Uh, they plan on having all the demolitions done by then. Um, just a second, Mr. Chairman. I will get the presentation up. All right. So next up is new business, and we have uh, outreach from the library in here. So I don't know if you want to come. Yeah, I like to get you on the camera somehow. So however that works, maybe sitting next to David would be the best. And you know, I can I can show you over my mic here, and you can tell me you can get on line and just. Stand. You may. <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so again, I'm Rebecca Hansett, and I work at the um, Sandy Public Library and the Teen Librarian. I recently went with Sarah McIntyre to a bookmobile conference in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, so we have a lot of enthusiasm for an outreach vehicle for the Sandy and Hulu area public libraries. Um, so yeah, let's continue with the presentation. So why do we need an outreach vehicle? So Sandy and Hilton have a larger service area population than a number of the libraries in Clackamas County libraries, but have a lower percentage of library card users and checkouts because of our significant square mileage. Um, libraries are once again getting bookmobiles on the road, including Lake Oswego, Malala, Estacada, which all have bookmobiles. Malala has a similar square, square mileage service area and since they have received an outreach vehicle, their card holders have increased 6.5%. 
we're interested in bringing library services to where people are. Um, just because there's lack of transportation, people might have difficulty getting to the library. Um, we're interested in uh, getting to retirement communities and senior centers, day, uh, daycares, preschools, parks, community stops include Boring, Orient, uh, Rhododendron, and Government Camp. Yeah. One of our strategic goals for the library is digital equity. With digital equity, um, we'll have access to the internet on the outreach vehicle. We plan to teach computer classes to underserved populations. Uh, we'll make computers available, printing services, and internet available to more of the community. We will offer, offer STEAM classes and literacy act activities for youth. STEAM includes science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Um, with these STEAM activities, we'll offer them at schools and parks, city events, and facilities, including the, the community center. These include also the VISTA apartments and the Pioneer Mobile Home Court. We will also offer story time, daycares, preschools, and offer these opportunities at the city parks. And then also, did we mention checking out library material? So in these outreach material, in these outreach uh, vehicles, they'll have um, items available for checkout, including books and media, which includes like CDs, DVDs, magazines, audiobooks, ebooks. Um, these also include uh, um, things that will bring in youth, like teen books, um, children's books, adult books, things that will uh, essentially bring in it, people that wanting to come and check out the, the, the outreach vehicle. Not only that, will it with having an outreach vehicle, it will help us uh, increase the volume of card holders in the community. So the impact of the outreach vehicle in the community will increase kids' early literacy activities, including story time and a program we called A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten. And with a little bit more information about A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten, I'll hand that over to Monica, who can explain that a little bit more than I can. Yeah, so A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten is an early literacy program we currently offer. Um, and it's just basically what exactly it sounds like. We encourage, it's a, it's a na national program and it encourages um, parents to read a thousand books to their kids before they start kindergarten. And the idea is just to develop a practice of um, reading to your child, um, which is really great for kids because it teaches them the skills they need um, learn in order to learn, learn to read later on when they're in school. So part of our um, goal is to do these early literacy activities so we can help the kids learn to read later on. So it's just one of the things that we do. And so this would be a great way for us to get the word out and to sign people up for that program. Um, and uh, one of the programs that we offer at the public library is a summer reading program. So having an outreach vehicle will increase the number of um, adults, children, and teens who can participate in the summer reading program. Um, what that will do is help reduce the summer slide, which will also hand over to Monica, who can explain what the summer slide is. Yeah, well. so summer slide, part of the reason why we like <clears throat> to do summer reading programs because um, Kids, if they don't continue learning over the summer or like reading, just simply even just reading books is super helpful for, for kids to do over the summer. And it, um, they call it the summer slide because their um, sort of learning sort of capacity goes down over the summer if they're not doing these kinds of things. So, so that's part of why we, we offer the summer reading program to kids. And we also offer it to parents and all ages actually, so that adults can also sort of um, participate as well and encourage their kids to do it. <laughs> so it'll increase kids and teens in their STEAM learning activities. Um, we'll be able to bring like science experiments out to local community areas. Um, our activities, of course, um, ways to engage in mathematics and um, technology. Um, again, like we said, the Vista apartment complex where they're not 
where they don't necessarily have access to transportation to the library. So bringing those opportunities to them is really important, as well as the Pioneer Mobile Home Park, which is a little farther away from the library and also doesn't have access to transportation to the library, as well as bringing them to schools. Uh, it's going to increase the number of computer sessions and computer class participation. It's going to increase the number of cardholders and regular library users. What we're asking from you is what can you, what can you do to help us? What we're asking from you is to write a letter of support from your organization, a, re a letter of support for the outreach vehicle. We're looking for your input as to where and when a good place would be to park the vehicle. We're open to um, your input. Where do you think that the vehicle would be a good place to park? Where do you think um, more, um, there, what, where in the community there is need, maybe an outreach vehicle that would be that would support the need for literacy, like STEAM activities, um, access to information, technology, internet, things like that. There's going to be a survey coming out soon that we hope that you can fill out. Um, we're hoping that you talk to your friends and your neighbors about the outreach vehicle. Um, and also assist in fundraising efforts by just getting the word out. Um, we do have information or a example of what the outreach vehicle looks like. If you guys would like to see it, I can pass it. Pass it. Yeah. Could you pass this around? And I have, um, I have three of them, so you'll have to kind of all share. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, if we were to give you a letter of support, how quickly? How quickly? Um, I think a couple weeks, I would think. Uh, I mean, we, we might need to ask Sarah for sure, but um, okay. she did mention we're, we're working on a grant right now. So, um, I think she kind of wants to sort of move ahead on the grant. So, if, you know. Yeah, so I've been in contact with Sarah mm -hmm. and David. She reached out to me and so I said, let's bring it to the group. But this, I can't make a decision on that. That's, yeah, not, yeah. that's not appropriate. That's not right. Um, so I said, could you on the agenda? So I appreciate that's you coming. Okay. Um, yeah. There might be some questions we have sure. um, yeah. that we want to fill out. But one of the questions that I, I know some of the answers because I've been on council and mm -hmm. learned a lot about the library. And the meetings, and, but um, maybe that not for everyone would know that. Um, there is an importance with how many people we have a card holders mm -hmm. in the county. So you want to explain that and how funding works around, you know, checkouts and those type of things in the county library system. Because I think there's a, what you guys were kind of alluding to, uh, maybe a negative for us to a big area, right. but we may not have as many checkouts as in another community like Malone, and we've seen the big increase, but right, also right. the public figure. Yeah, so we do get funded by the county. Is that what you were talking yeah. about? Yeah, so we do get funded from the county, um, Clackamas County. And so, yeah, the more checkouts we have within um, the county, um, the more funding we get. Helps our yes, yes, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is so, it, is it just checkouts or is it number of card holders? We keep statistics on both of those things. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I think I think both of those things are help into account. Um, yeah. My understanding is because it also looks, you know, if they put money into certain different areas, you know, it's not money you can look at that. So I was also surprised to see like Oswego, which is you know a very rural area, like mm -hmm. Oswego. Yeah. Uh, but they have. Uh, yeah. I was in uh, Southern Oregon down in Ashland a couple of years ago. Uh, at a conference, and they, I, or the city actually, uh, it, it was the Oregon Connections Conference about internet connectivity, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and they had that county down there, uh, but uh, they had a local bill there, uh, or, Jackson. Know, same, mm -hmm. Jackson had, had the same uh, set of it, looks basically exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. we can go in and, and do and they pull that around. You know the county, the countywide thing. Like yeah, it's not really a city, and then they do the library system. Definitely, we're really impressed in what they they offer bringing to schools. Yeah, is there any connection with schools and trying to? There was an article in the paper the other day about a school district that was going to register all their. 
library cards mm -hmm. in that. And I thought to myself, first I had that, I was like, ah, you boosted the numbers for more money. <laughs> like, they were automatically enrolling. Yeah. With, oh, right. If you were a student, yeah. you get a card. Yes, yes. Then, oh, you just bump your numbers up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. But I just curiosity if there's been that discussion. Yeah, we are kind of working within um, the link system, which is libraries in Clackamas County. We're all we're all separate libraries, but we're connected through this network. Um, and we're trying to actually do the, exactly that that same thing. Is <laughs> uh, we're trying to work with all the different school districts, which is kind of a huge undertaking because there's so many different school districts to see if we can get library cards to all of the. Um, students within the school district. Yeah, so this one would be Oregon Trail. So it would be our Oregon Trail. So we're kind of starting that process. We're starting discussions with them. Okay. And I know an Oregon Trail, um, it, I mean, uh, Oregon City, they've kind of already started the process. Mm -hmm. so. and the one that read the article. About yeah, so, so we're working on that. Yeah, that's something that we're definitely working on for sure. Yeah. And Multnomah County is very, um, in, 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 has already started that program and it's been pretty successful with getting more uh, children into the libraries. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for bringing this forward, first of all. Totally in support of actually already signed a letter in support oh, <laughs> on behalf of the Planning you. Commission. Yes. Um, yes. So, absolutely, thank you for that. Uh, you know, my kids would absolutely love it if, you know, this came into town. Uh, but I have a question around kind of staffing for this and mm -hmm. uh, what staffing looks like, what it takes to staff this sort of thing, and how that affects library staff. Yeah. So, um, what we're, let's see, we have, we've had to have this question before. So, um, what we're going to do at first is staff it with current library staff. So, for example, since I'm the children's librarian, I would be taking it to the um, schools and to the daycares. Um, Rebecca would be going to the high schools and other like the teen locations, yeah, yeah. Like, that are relatable to that. And so, and then we're going to have um, have it staffed also by volunteers. So it'll be like one staff person and one volunteer that's helping out. Um, so, so we're going to do that, and then we'll just we'll have to um, just put more people on the desk, you know, in that way. So, um, and then hopefully after we've done that and just kind of see how that goes. Um, she's talking about maybe hiring somebody to run the mobile Yeah, so we kind of have a plan for that because we're not planning on hiring anybody like immediately. So. <laughs> yeah, the sustainability of having um, staffing with the bookmobile is like what Monica was saying was we're planning to do yeah one staff member one volunteer to start with to, to see how that goes and um, what's what's great about the library is that a lot of the the staff that are not librarians are interchangeably like trained so there won't be staffing issues as far as like who's going to be on a desk and where so thankfully like if the librarians are going on and doing like the professional um, work going to like the schools and the, um, the retirement communities and the parks. They're really still, still staff and competent workers in the library. So it sounds like you're going to do a, a, a broad reach out for grants and for fundraising mm -hmm. to get the total dollars. What about future dollars? needed to do the maintenance on the vehicle that you purchase? Um, yes, let's see, yeah, this is definitely a Sarah question. So let me see here. <laughs> so she, she wrote, she did, she gave us an, um, some questions here that were already asked. So, um, so let's see, she's got some. The reason why Sarah's not here is there's also a library board meeting. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> at a library board. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was like she had some other things she had to do. So um, yeah, maintenance cut. This comes up a lot. So um, the way she described it to me, I'm not a budget person, so and I, I don't know the details. But um, so she said that she tends to have um, surplus in the budget every year, and for different kinds of things like this. And so she's planning on using the surplus that we usually have for maintenance costs. And then the next time we go through a budget cycle, she would. Right, that means yeah, yeah, and it may also come from um, we have the friends of the library, but that's a fundraising 
group for us that um, helps with um, programming and um, extracurricular activities. And so that might be a, a more mm -hmm. a way to sustain the, the extra cost. The Especially a new vehicle, well. it will be covered for a couple of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, eventually yeah. we'll definitely make sure yeah. that is covered. Exactly. Good question. Good question. <laughs> Chris, do you have any questions on the screen? I don't think I do at this time. I'm actually really excited. You know, as a previous preschool teacher, we had an option like this that would have been amazing. So I see a lot of a lot of cool things coming of this. Questions from you all? I think it adds value to our community, mm -hmm. um, and by doing that, uh, drives you know you know more resiliency in our residents, but in our businesses as well. Because we have more to offer in our community and not having to leave or mm -hmm. thinking that it's just because our community grows and what we're able to offer it is mm -hmm. a good yeah. asset to that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, someone that uh, my kids uh, all learn how to read chapter books and that because my wife is pretty amazing mm -hmm. uh, before they enter kindergarten. Oh, wow. Um, oh, that's you know, great. because of those, the, just the ability to go into the library and they become, you know, readers. I don't know if I turned about 15 or old enough to be now. But anyway, that's kind of the story. But, you know, they, they've just read probably thousands of books. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a lot of hundreds of books. That's yeah. all. You know, just hand in the battle of the books. Uh, oh, the of course, yes. Um, it's a huge yeah. thing. And hopefully that maybe can get mm -hmm. yeah, that sure. as well because schools are. But, uh, so the ask here to our group is whether or not we would support a letter of. Um, recommendation to uh, grant, you know, to, what do you call it, um, to support or give to this cause here. And with the economic development team, we do not have money. We are not right, the right, right. board. We don't uh, give money to anyone that's, that's the council, uh, but we can give our support of uh, our group of the Public Planning Commission has already done that. And, Assuming the council is part of the council. And is there, who's the audience for the letter? Um, we're working on a grant to um, the Ford. Ford, Ford, Ford yes, yep. yes. So it would be that. But Sarah can probably give you more information about the details. Yeah. And it sounded like in the email from Sarah uh, to David and I was that there was other opportunities and other people that could be yeah. giving out grants, not just one uh, foundation or one mm -hmm. grant. Maybe organizations like businesses or something that they want to do. Mm -hmm. It's how I did. I didn't. I just go back and forth on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, if there's any other questions, what's the will of this advisory board? Do we think this is a good idea? Do we want to support it? Do we not? Yeah. Getting a lot of nods and the thumbs up, uh, Chris. It sounded like you were in favor. <laughs> Okay, so I see uh, that. I, maybe just to make it kind of official, it's like maybe we'll just take a vote. All those in favor of uh, supporting it um, in a letter to support this for the library? Say aye. 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 And opposed? Hearing none, we will sign a letter of support to the library in this uh, book and bill. I think it's a great thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to draft uh, a letter um, for you to review. Yeah, well, I'll do that if it's okay with all of you. We had a draft of one from Sarah. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah, right. that sent to us. Oh, yeah. That's, um, I'm assuming it's pretty similar. You probably had a draft. <laughs> I sure did. Well, you did. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the worst is, you know, I think I can see you the letter. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, so we'll get that in. Um, and then we'll get second. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you yeah. for letting and us know. I, I will try to get that letter to the as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Cool. All right. We'll move on. Uh, so we have a comp plan update. Nicole? No, okay. Oh, bet. I'm just reading yeah. on here. So. Oh, does it say Nicole? Nicole Underwood. Oh, yeah, sorry. That was my error. Wrong yeah. Nicole's the next one. <laughs> okay. 
So we'll start with the comp plan update. Um, Okay, Matt, we've got the uh, we've got block three up on the screen. So actually, Nicole is going to walk through uh, the uh, the different uh, goals and the policies and see what questions you have. Um, I figured I'd just make a remark or two before we got going. You probably all know that the city is doing an update to its comprehensive plan, and the comprehensive plan is the guiding document for how the should uh, the city should grow over the next twenty years. Um, and as Nicole will tell you in a moment or two, for economic development, we uh, are, are really building what we're looking at in terms of uh, goals and policies, partially off of what we found in the economic development, but then looking very closely at your economic development strategy that you just finished recently. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Nicole, and uh, I'll be here if she wants to kick any questions my way, and I'll be taking notes. Awesome. Thank you, Beth. And uh, yes, I get to get to talk to you guys about two um, topics tonight. So very exciting. Um, so uh, as Beth said, we've we've actually got four goals that we're going to go over tonight with the associated policies. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start by reading the goal, and then I'll I'll start by reading the uh, policies in their entirety. But I can always switch to summarizing if if that's preferred as we move through. Um, the, the main thing here is we want to give you a chance to comment, uh, you know, both on, on the content of the individual policies, as well as um, just let us know if there's anything overarching that we are missing and should be written in as a policy. And, um, and then as Beth, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. And Nicole, I was just going to prompt you to talk about the actions a little. Yes, the, um, the economic development strategic plan, uh, yeah, uh, is... As Beth said, a lot of these policies are based off of that document. And so the Economic Development Strategic Plan basically holds the actions um, that will be implementing a lot of these policies. Um, and so as I go through, there's a couple that I, I'll call out and I'll, I'll mention what goals these are associated with um, in that document. But just so you know, there are actions that will um, that will uh, implement these. Um, and so goal one, just starting straight off, is provide opportunities for a diverse range of businesses to thrive in Sandy, ensuring broader access to economic opportunity and maintaining Sandy's high quality of life. Um, this particular goal and the policies underneath it align with mostly with goals one and two and the um, coordinating actions of the Economic Development Strategic Plan. Um, the policies here focus on coordinating economic development efforts with other jurisdictions and agencies. Um, fostering entrepreneurship and new businesses, uh, attracting higher than average wage jobs, and then also um, partnering to provide workforce development and uh, supportive services for residents. And so policy 1.1 1 .1, uh, is to coordinate economic development efforts with other jurisdictions and agencies, um, such as those listed here. And uh, the, the goal to being to identify and support expansion of existing industries and attraction of new industries to the community. I'm just gonna keep going through. Please pause me if you want a wordsmith or, or you have any comments. If not, I'll just stop at the end of the um, the goal one and we can kind of see if, if those uh, meet, meet what you're hoping for. Policy 1.2 is foster entrepreneurship and new business creation by leveraging investments in technology, strengthening economic development partnerships, and connecting businesses to resources. Um, 1.3 is attract business offering jobs, off, businesses offering jobs that pay higher than Clackamas County's average wages to provide opportunities uh, for people to live and work in Sandy, focusing on industries such as metal fabrication, outdoor tools, manufacturing, and related professional services. Um, and those, and can you scroll down? Um, thank you. Those uh, industries are pulled from the Economic Development Strategic Plan as, as target industries. Um, this particular one also gets at a little bit of what we discussed in the last um, advisory board meeting, which uh, brought up the desire for higher wage jobs, particularly ones that are in um, industry, in, in, um, uh, manufacturing and the like that don't require as high a, high a level of education. So then policy 1.4 is to partner with local and regional organizations. Um, and these are the listed here. Some of those organizations are also listed in your uh, strategic plan. And that's to support workforce development, especially for youth and disadvantaged workers, aligning with Sandy's economic development goals and the needs of local businesses. 
And then the last policy under this goal is to ensure that Sandy residents have access to healthcare, childcare, job training, and support systems. I'm gonna pause if there's any comments on that. If not, I will just keep right on going. Uh, Beth has a comment. <laughs> well, my comment was to ask uh, David to do exactly what he just did, which was to scroll up to show us uh, goal one um, on data policy 1.5. Um, these are really, thank you, David, really the the broad, you know, broad economic development stuff that the city will be focusing on. And then there's um, goals related to commercial and industrial later. Yeah. Um, just one comment on policy 1.1. 1 .1. Um, I just look out uh, as the economic development manager, I might add uh, travel warning. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, the recommendation. Um, We're not seeing any. Perfect. All right, I'll move on to the, the commercial ones. Um, and so the commercial goal here is to foster vibrant commercial zones with a mix of retail options that serve the needs of regional residents and enhance destination appeal. Um, this goal and the following policies align most strongly with uh, goals five and six of the Economic Development Strategic Plan. Those are the ones focused around um, enhancing tourism and hospitality, as well as establishing um, Sandy as a leader for East Clackamas County in retail. Um, and so the uh, we'll just get into policy 2.1 is to invest in the development of a lively, walkable downtown to support a mixture of commercial and retail uses. 2.2 is to support and encourage infill and redevelopment, particularly in downtown along Pioneer Boulevard, Proctor Boulevard, Pleasant Street, um, and Pleasant Street as a way to use land and existing infrastructure more efficiently. And then use large and undeveloped commercial areas to support a range of retail businesses with an emphasis on ensuring availability of space for large retailers integrated with smaller um, commercial uses. Just as a kind of side note, one of the implementing actions on this policy 2.3 is uh, is is that that retail uh, analysis that you um, that the city is going to be doing with Echo Northwest. And then policy 2.4 is to encourage and support a variety of retail, restaurant, and recreational services to draw visitors and enhance community well-being for residents through strategic investments in hospitality, place-based tourism, and community development. And then the last one is to monitor land development and update the buildable lands inventory on a regular basis to ensure that there is enough vacant commercial land to accommodate expected growth. I'm, I'm not incredibly surprised there's not too many comments, especially since that <laughs> this is a, <laughs> should sound a lot like your economic development strategic plan. Yeah, like some of these are almost word for word, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it should should be it should it should be that way. Um, OK. All right, we'll move into industrial then. Uh, goal three is to promote sustainable and non-polluting industrial growth that diversifies Sandy's economic base, supports high wage job creation and cultivates innovation. Um, these align with goals three and four of the strategic plan, which focus on uh, food processing and manufacturing. Um, these policies focus on ensuring that Sandy has sufficient land for industrial development, specifically sites that are appropriate for that industry, and then focusing on partnerships and um, encouraging collaboration. Um, so 3.1, ensure that Sandy has sufficient industrial land to provide industrial growth opportunities with a variety of characteristics and sizes and with adequate access to transportation and utility facilities by avoiding conflicts with incompatible uses. Preserve and protect, protect industrial lands in locations with direct access to highway, particularly parcels 10 acres and larger so that the land is more likely to be used for traded sector industrial uses, and then also limit commercial development in industrial areas in uses which are clearly ancillary. And I always struggle with this one. Someone's going to tell me how to say this properly. Ancillary. Ancillary. <laughs> um, and subordinate industrial development. And then 3.3, work with economic development partners to support the development of metals fabrication and related industries. 
um, and then encourage collaboration between business businesses and innovators in specialty food and beverage industries to strengthen the food storage and processing sector. Um, and then the last one is, is the monitor industrial development similar to the commercial development and update your buildable lands inventory. Comments? Seeing none here. So I, I do have one minor comment for you. Policy 3.2 is kind of an important one. Um, you don't have a lot of industrial land. Um, and so making sure that that you really consider um, conversion of industrial land, um, especially larger sites before you do that conversion, um, I think is, is certainly worth doing. And this policy uh, will cause the city to, to take pause before it rezones um, industrial sites with these uh, with these characteristics, which I think is worth the discussion and thought for later on um, if those those uh, pressures come true. Thank you. Yeah, we know uh, we have a lot of hills out here, so we don't have a lot of flat land either. <laughs> so I was reminded makes... of that going through uh, Pesticated the other day, seeing all the industrial buildings that they have out there. It's like, wow. But they got all that flat land. It's all that flat land right on the highway. And kind of a nice five acre parcel. Yeah. It's, yeah. But they don't have any natural gas. So. True. Anyway. Plus is months. <laughs> we'll move on. All right. Well, this is this is the last goal um, under the economic development uh, policies. So this is for infrastructure. And the goal is to ensure that Sandy has sufficient infrastructure capacity to support a variety of employment opportunities, um, ensuring that land can be developed within a reasonable time period. And so uh, there's only two policies under this one, coordinating capital improvement planning with economic development planning to ensure infrastructure availability to employment um, lands, and then investing in SandyNet and other resources and infrastructure that support and attract a home-based workforce. Um, and that one is certainly aligned with your strategic plan, which also um, was interested in, in attracting the home-based workforce. Nicole, I don't remember the actions we had under 4.1, but um, were any of the actions about pursuing state grants? Um, I do uh, know the actions. Give me one sec. <laughs> and if, if they weren't, we might want to consider, you know, including an action like that, because in a certain sense, goal four is the key to making any of the other goals work, assuming that you've got some land to do this, because as you all know, with the moratorium, there's lots of things you can't do right now. Um, so... Yeah, we have one of the actions is just pursuing uh, funding for needed infrastructure improvements, and we might we can expand on that. Um, but yeah, question you know, I'm all about you know supporting and, and putting out their sandy net, you know, I <laughs> might be the poster child, but um, there's other infrastructure things, and in why weren't like water, sewer, roads, uh even uh, electric, electricity capabilities added into this uh, um, goal four. Like, I love calling out SandyNet and it should be there. 100% um, agree with that, but what about some of those others? Nicole, can I take this? Yeah, please do. So your things like your road, um, uh, your needs for roads, those are dealt with your transportation system plan. Um, and so when we're saying uh, coordinate your capital improvements plannings, that includes your transportation system plan. The same thing is true um, for your uh, uh, water and wastewater facilities. Um, and so uh, to a certain sense, those are called out without being named. We could certainly name them here. Um, I would have a little concern about having too much of a policy here around those without making sure that it, it didn't conflict with the policies under uh, under your facilities planning and your transportation system planning. For electricity, um, I, I would defer to David here a little bit about that, um, but electricity and natural gas are things that are outside of the city's control, um, whereas SandyNet is something that's inside of the city's control. And uh, so there could be a policy about coordinating with um, uh, uh, other uh, uh, service providers, such as the electric electricity service providers. Um, uh, but you wouldn't want to go too far into that um, uh, beyond that that coordination piece, um, because that, that's really outside of the city's control. 
Yeah, I was thinking it is outside the city's control as the city doesn't own that, but coordination mm -hmm. with it. I mean, if you look yeah. at Metro, they've been in, you know, coordination with the electric company for sure because of the data centers and, and yep. on that infrastructure. Obviously, it's bringing them an economic boon. Not saying we're going to get data centers out here and that type of thing. But to that same point, um, we've had a lot of issues in the last 10 years or, or more about buildings and, and development uh, slowing down because we can't get the PGE or the electric grid to be able to be act quick enough. I mean, the food carts were carts were an example of where they thought the city was holding them up. It wasn't. They were just sitting there because they couldn't get the electricity hooked up by PGE for months on end, like six months. Right. So having that does have an economic impact. Uh, and then also, you know, what is some of the things that could go on from a city to help with uh, the encouragement of working in the future with them. Does that make sense at all? And I know like oh, yeah. they have natural gas, they would love it. And so they're constantly trying to get that. It's not in their circle, but it is part of needing to get that for the livability of their community. David, it, it seems like adding a, uh, a policy about coordinating with those uh, other infrastructure providers and naming some of them, um, would be smart here. It was just an idea. I'd like to hear from the rest of you too, what your thoughts are. I'm a big infrastructure person. So. Any comments? I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, I think it, I thought that it was generic enough because Senate Bill 1537 that they're going through right now is going to dramatically change land use in Oregon if it passes. Um, and that's the governor's plan for, for you know, moving housing fast. And it may change the way we as a city can classify our own properties or change them if we want to, right? commercial and residential and limit. So I, we can't be too specific in the language there. And I thought it was written, I was going to say pretty good because you want it to be vague enough so you can incorporate any higher level changes that the state imposes on, on small city government. Yeah, no, I hear you. And I haven't been following that bill because, you know, no. really? I'm doing some other things right now. 1537. Yeah, um, no, that's great perspective. I appreciate it. I'm not saying my idea was, you know, something we should go for. Or, or just you know, having infrastructure in place, infrastructure, uh, future developments. But I don't think that 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 uh, that Senate bill is going to really change the need for infrastructure. Um, I think it just may change how some of the, uh, how some of uh, planning is is governed and, and and what you can do in terms of uh, variances and not. Um, so I think putting in our road, uh, Bell Street 362nd is an infrastructure road is opened up an enormous amount. And it wasn't going to do it on its own, at least not probably for the next 15 years. Yeah. It's, it's been sit, doing that. And those, those are the some of the ideas I, I think of. And when putting that in there, putting in the, you know, the sewer and the water type of, to, to prep it and get it ready. But we can go either way. I think overall, this whole thing is going to be good for our um, moving uh, moving forward. So any other thoughts on that? Or? I think 4.1 kind of covers what you're talking about. That's the part that's about the capital improvement plan. And capital improvement planning is something that's uh, specifically um, inside the city with uh, city um, uh, infrastructure versus coordinating with out, uh, outside infrastructure providers. Meaning outside would be natural gas and- uh, Electrical PGA. Electric, you know, mm -hmm. it's free about the electric grid, you know, it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty sour right now, you know, just <clears throat> it's aged. And we have a lot more demand on it. So, yes, we do. So, issues with that just out there. We would actually, and we're not unique. No, we're not. I mean, it's the whole, it's all of this area, metro region. So, so thoughts, leave it as is, it sounds like, and having the capital improvement 4.1 covers some of those things, except maybe for electric and gas, which are both. Uh, Monopolies outside of our control. <laughs> outside of our control, meaning we can't bring in competition for them, but it doesn't mean that we can't um, 
have a key for. Right. So at the risk of being a wordsmith, does it do us any benefit to put the word sustainable between other and resources in 4.2? What resources are you thinking about um, uh, that would be uh, not sustainable? I mean, uh, what are you thinking that that might gain you? I, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just wondering. Of infrastructure, I think of it's solid. I think of it's permanent. When I think of resources, I think of they come and they go. Um, and I don't know what I'm thinking about. I just think <laughs> of the word. <laughs> so I was, I was just wondering if we're if we are looking for that, are we looking for something that is sustainable into the, the long term future or not? It, it's indifferent. Um, I just so there are people who will tell you that natural gas is not sustainable. Um, and I, I'm I'm not going to argue ab about that. Um, but if you I think if you leave it a little bit vague, then you get to interpret it um at the time that it's needed, unless you are are specifically looking at um, excluding some resources through that. I'm big too, I just was asking. <laughs> yeah, I know. I appreciate your question and I appreciate your response about the rate because I can totally see that in five or seven years, depending on who might be, or 10 years, who might be trying to read or, or push one way or the other. Okay, so we'll leave it. Sounds like we'll leave it. All right, let's move on. Was that it? That's, that's it. it. Any closing remarks on that aspect of it? So these will be going to um, in front of the Planning Commission and the City Council on a date that I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Um, I know that we've received at least one comment from a Planning Commissioner um, and might be getting another comment or two on uh, the Block 3 goals. It's probably my comment. <laughs> Maybe your comment. Well, and now that you're on this board too, you can reference the comments that we brought up too. So, or you're well aware of where we're at as well. So, all right. I appreciate uh, that and all the work there and bring it forward. And it feels like we're on the home run stretch there. It does. Well, I think I will uh, end up dropping off as uh, uh, the uh, retail project is one that I'm not involved in, that, that Nicole's, uh, Nicole's running the show over there. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. All right. Quick question is, the what's most of that land around Bell Street? And so is that commercial? Commercial. commercial. It's all seafood. Yeah. Well, most it's not policy. Most of it's north there's, side of it is what our yeah. There's some the, residential up there. Yeah. There's kind of fades office. into the neighborhood a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, okay. Thank you. A commercial could be residential. Yeah, well, sure. it could be <laughs> could be that mixed use of uh, commercial yeah. on the bottom, retail right. on top, and yeah. you know, if we all had our own billion dollars, we could dream about what we could build. Um. All right. Next, Nicole, if you want to kick it off with the retail market, and uh, we have about 40 minutes left in the meeting. So. Okay. I was uh, just going to run through the scope really quickly, and I know that we want to focus on the case study portion of this. So just... Um, just as a as a reminder, Echo Northwest is going to be working with the city of Sandy on a retail market analysis. Um, this is, in a way, an update from some of the 2009 and I think the 2015 um, work that you did. Uh, this was supposed to be done in 2020, and then for obvious reasons, this, this got postponed. Um, and so this is coming back. There's been a lot of changes over the past 10 years since this was last done, um, and there's been a lot of changes related to COVID. Um, and so we'll be we'll be working on on updating that and looking at how some of the national trends and um, and the changes in, in both uh, population dynamics, tourism, and how that ha will impact the retail environment in Sandy. And so I'll just walk through the tasks quickly. If you want to move down to task one, um, David. So we're going to start with um, we'll look at your previous studies. We'll look at um, you know what has actually 
based on those previous market studies and other trends, we're seeing what has actually happened um, and how does that track with the forecasted estimates from uh, the 2009 and 2014 estimates. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to be bringing in um, a, a lens of the how has the structural market conditions changed? We know there's been changes um, and shifts in space utilization. People are working from home more. Um, the the trends in in uh, uh, going online has shifted what retail space needs look like. We know that the food service industry particularly has shifted as more people are getting delivery with Uber Eats and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then there's also been change in migration patterns. We've seen um, people kind of moving out from the metro and out to places like Sandy. Um, and then um, and then if you just move on, we, like I said, there's there's also been an increase in in tourism and um, and the attraction of markets that are outside of larger cities. Um, and I think there's an important point here for Sandy specifically, which is your your development moratorium. Um, and so we'll also while that was national trends, we'll also be considering, you know, how that does impact um, the, the types of retail and, and what will happen. And so then very, you know, very typical for a retail market analysis will be establishing a, a, a market area um, and uh, identifying who your target market's going to be, what um, what what their preferences are. Um, and so, you know, that all impacts the type of retail that would be uh, be uh, successful in Sandy. And then moving on to the forecast of current and future market conditions in this task four um, will be uh looking at spending you know what uh oftentimes a retail gaps analysis where what are people spending money on and and how much of that is being captured within sandy and does that what kind of opportunities does that mean for sandy how much of that spending um that people are making on purchases potentially outside of sandy could be captured in sandy um and so then being able to translate that into square feet of of development for particular retail types um, and so that that's kind of what that task will entail. And like I said, this is where the development moratorium um, will also be a big consideration. And then um, task five is pretty self-explanatory. It's an inventory of your current land and space supply. Um, and so we'll just be looking at uh, it, what's existing there, what your current vacancy um, rates are, and um, and then just looking at some trends over time. How has how has that shifted? This case study analysis is, I think, where we want to uh, spend the majority of the time. Um, part of, uh, well, the main the main part of this, the, the final, if you want to actually switch to task seven real quick, David, um, the final document is, is going to be a summary of, of our findings. Um, and then it's also going to be include a recommendation. Um, so these are a set of recommendations and actions for the city to consider to support the retail environment. And I think that's where your case study analysis is going to come in, um, come and be pretty important. So uh, what the case study analysis will do is we're going to be identifying, I think we said up to three peer regions and um, and, and identifying what, what they're doing to attract different retailers and development into the city and and how well that's working and what some um, what what some of the things that they're doing could be applied to Sandy in, in, in that context. And so um, when if you want to shift back to task six, uh, when we're, we're thinking about this, we want to think about, you know, cities that are relatively in similar scale um, to Sandy that have tourism impacts. I think an important part of Sandy is that you're on the way <laughs> to places. You are on the way to Mount Hood and you are on the way to the metro region from the other the other side. Um, and you also, uh, you you are very, you're very close to the metro region. And so that that's gonna be a center of gravity over there. So you wanna consider uh, different cities for case study that have similar characteristics like that. Um, and so I'm gonna give it back to you, David, if you wanna, uh, I'll let you lead from there. I'm here to kind of answer questions or help help think through some of these case studies, but I'll give it back to you. Yeah, we talked a, a little bit about this um, at the beginning of the day, uh, before we really got going here. Um, you know, so I, I figured you guys might have some opinions about this, um, considering that there are um, a number of really good um, examples of, of cities that are, you know, approximately our size, some a little smaller, some a little bigger, um, that have really done wonderful work when it comes to this sort of thing. I'm thinking of cities like, you know, with impressive downtowns, um, like, um, well, McMinnville is the one that we've uh, we talked about earlier, the 
I'm, I'm a little bit more interested in McMinnville only because, um, as I said earlier, McMinnville kind of is what we aspire to be, or at least that's kind of the way I'm thinking of it. Um, when we get to their population level, I mean, they do have tourism inputs in that they're the kind of the gateway to the wine country. And uh, you can see some of that in their downtown, but really just the way they've designed their downtown and the businesses that they have. It, that's, um, you know, that's something that I would aspire for Sandy to look at five, you know, five to 10 years from now as we continue growing. But there are certainly other examples of other cities around that are our size or even smaller that have done a fantastic job with, um, you know, drawing people in and uh, really pushing their retail businesses. I'm thinking of cities like Sisters, um, uh, cities like uh, Hood River. Um, and um, there's lots of other examples, but I'm more interested in what you guys think. So as, as you think about cities that you've, you've been around here in Oregon, or even you know, Southwest Washington, I would imagine, um, does anything really, have you, can you think of one that really stands out as to how their downtown is, how their retail sector is, how walkability is, just that draw, kind of draws you into the downtown. And, and, and again, I mean, Hood River's classic example. They've got a great downtown, a great, um, main drag there. Um, there's lots and lots of diverse retail businesses there, and it does well people from the region. But again, I'm not a you got as far, so I'm more interested in your thoughts than that. Now, the ones that you listed are the ones that I've been to, like Bill, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and Nicole, to be clear, we're, I mean, you guys have looked at a lot of more cities than we have, obviously. I mean, this is what you do for a living. So we're certainly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I didn't want to lead with giving some potential. I wanted to get some thoughts before I made any uh, suggestions. Certainly Hood River came up for us as well as sisters. Um, a couple of other places, and I don't know them very well. I brainstormed a little bit with Chris, who's going to be the, the project director on this. Um, and he was mentioning places like Ridgefield. I don't know if um, you've seen any other downtown, some places that are a little bit smaller that are maybe more up and coming. Um, and so Ridgefield came up, um, uh, like I said, Hood River was, was one that I thought would be interesting purely from it's, it's almost an, like McMinnville, an aspiration, like what could it be? Um, and then Ridgefield being one that is more, uh, attainable, like a little bit more attainable happening right now, a little smaller. Um, there's also the potential to, Oh, sorry if somebody was speaking. No, you're good. Okay. Um, there's also the potential to look at, uh, you know, some places like, like Oregon City. It's not, you know, it does it doesn't necessarily have the same downtown, but it's certainly a, you know, it's, it's like slightly. It's kind of out of the way. It's out of, you know, it's not it's not the draw of the Portland metro region. It's certainly been developing, um, and so it's a, you know, not quite as far out as Sandy, but it it could be an interesting one as well. Um, I'll, I'll pause. <laughs> yeah, I think those are all great. We want to make Sandy ours, right? Course, and not yeah. be, you know, they're great as examples to look at and bring into, but we want to make ourselves, you know, we're unique, right? Of course. Good or bad. I mean, we have a highway right going to the center yeah. of us that divides our town, and we have some uh, ups and downs, and we don't have a, a grid system like some of the communities that you talked about. Well, really, that's so. one of the reasons why I like to think of because they used to have a highway going through the third downtown too, and they they resolved that problem. Yeah. So, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and, ugly for a while. It, it was it ugly for a while. Way ugly for a while. And Redmond is kind of in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think actually, I think I like Redmond's example because we have watched Redmond as well. I was on city council and stuff, and went over and talked to them yeah. multiple times and what they had to do and. So the town didn't dry up when it came to that. Now we want to bypass, or I want to bypass too one day, yeah. but it's going to be 20, 30 years down the road just because of how long it takes mm -hmm. these things to get funded, right? You have to start somewhere. And we, we tried and yeah, started something here start, but a few like, years ago, but you know, it's got another 20, 30 years on this. But it's also about the retail and market analysis, it's also about what our community needs too. Mm -hmm. So not mm -hmm. sign or it looks like what. What is it that we're getting? What is it our residents want in our community? I love the different things that you brought up, you know, going through this a few times in my working uh, volunteer with the city. Uh, some of the things didn't exist back then, you know, the Grubhub stuff. And I haven't personally ever done that, but I know it's a popular thing. 
to give people that maybe just had a baby or, you know, like they need help, you know, um, but, and I know that's a big, big thing out there, but so it's changing that environment, that environment is constantly changing. I, I, and I think I mentioned this too, but your work from home, like the push for work from home and more people just being present. Um, I'm curious how that's going to look in this, this, this market analysis. This is kind of new. Um, more and more people working for, you know, like you're not getting that drawn to a downtown like Portland. And so I think that's going to be an interesting, um, interesting piece of this is you have more daytime population potentially. I wonder like people like the ant farm business like that. When I drive by, you know, I'm not here during the day, but when I do come by through and seeing all the people in there and it looks like they're working, maybe they're all socializing <laughs> for mid lunch meetings or whatever. But I think, you know, those type of businesses where they are catering to both, you know, like, Hey, get some food, get some coffee, meet and, and have an environment where it's not just purely a restaurant type of thing. Yeah, it's interesting when you go into camp farm now, um, between like nine and one, um, it's look around and see how many people are on their laptops. There's a lot. Of people. And that's, uh, ant farms really benefit from that. I mean, by providing a place where even though it's a little bit loud in there from time to time, they provide a big wide open space where people can get together and maybe have business meetings. I mean, there's big business meetings out there all the time. I think it'll be Here's good. Time to time. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be good to keep a, Kind of open a mind to it too because mm -hmm. um, remote work is changing still. I have a friend oh, yeah. of mine who works for a game with Chrysler, they're, uh, he's, they're all being called back to work yeah. four days a week. So, where's it going to go? Is it going to start? I think it'll start to shift back, but I don't think it'll go back to where it was before. But you said four, not five. Yeah. So, there's that. Yeah. Because they know to yeah. where it lands in 20 years, we don't know. Exactly. But I don't think it will be what it was in 2019. Yeah. So yeah, that that will play a big effect into this market analysis because of our residents and what they're needing, uh, what they're wanting. I'd also be interested in our esteemed uh, chamber executive director's opinion on this. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Yeah. I, it's hard to uh, remember to look up at the screen. Um, the, no problem. No uh, problem. Um, communities. Uh, and, you know, comparatively speaking, I'm really curious as to your take on this. Is there a city that sticks out to you? Well, you know, I, of course, the Madras, you know, the Redmond area. And um, I love going to Hood River, so I love that area as well. Um, but one that um, comes to mind, and keep in mind, this was 2018, I think, when I was there, or 2019 last. But um, downtown Lebanon had went through um, changes and turned their downtown back into a thriving one. And it we um, got to tour it. I was there for an ambassador meeting with them and it was really kind of cool what they had done too. So it's not one of those well-known ones, but you know they had really came together as a community and really tried to bring back that. Um, and honestly, I haven't spoke with them to see how it's going now, but I'd love to take a trip down there and you know, see how things are going for them. But they had a bunch of mixed um, buildings in there. I mean, they had a gym in the middle of the downtown area. They had a 50s cafe and you went through the back door and it was this beautiful purple tea room. Um, and then, you know, they had a brewery. They had all these things down there to do, but they also had the banks and they had some of the service industries too, which was kind of cool, which our downtown currently has a ton of service industries. So you know, finding a way to mix those up was kind of a cool concept that they were doing. Oh, really? Well, yeah, so I would have never thought of that. Thanks, Chris. I'm I'm curious if anybody's uh, spent any time in St. Helens. I believe I know that Echo's done some work there, and I know that they've been doing some work, but I I haven't personally been, so I can't recommend it or not. Um, but has that been on anybody's radar? On there the last few years, in the middle of the night, running through the to coast. <laughs> uh, Was there anything interesting? <laughs> not in the middle of the night. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> I've been there on a boat, got off to have dinner, got back on the boat, yeah. <laughs> they walk around. Went to a concert, they had that venue out there. We're from Sandy, we don't go to the west side often. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fine, but uh, she's 
And I used to work in Richfield, and it is set up a lot like we are. Um, I mean, even their Fourth of July, they do the same thing. They do a parade with line the families up along the street, and they throw candy out. It's um, it, it's a little smaller and a little more country. Where is Richfield? Um, no it's uh, exit 14 and I-5. In Washington. In Washington. Yeah, oh, up in Washington. Washington. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's a, oh, okay. They're a growing, they're a growing um, community. Okay. I work they're, they're a little smaller than us? Yeah. Um, Honestly, I, I like that. I was there in, I was there in 17 and 18, so I, I worked for school when I was there. And I was on a rat to build. And I almost bought it. Kind of like, I mean, I, it's kind of like a rival because I grew up here. Estacada is really changing the downtown a lot, right? Like, and, and it, we're not set up the same in that area, but it's a much smaller town. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like some of the things that they've been doing. Yeah. Now we are, from what I think of a retail like competitor in a lot of ways. So when Fred Myers went in here, it really sucked a lot of business up. They had to redevelop and refigure things out because we just became a lot closer to them than the Clackamas. Mm -hmm. I heard from a lot of businesses. So what we do here will end up affecting them over there. Uh, not to shy away from anything that we do. It's just, uh, but I like what they've been doing and trying to revitalize in, in doing that. And I don't know if they did a market analysis back then or not. But. That's a good question. Uh, I can always check with them. Um, yeah, that all started with the work that Chair Wilcox did with that, that downtown uh, revitalization project where they kind of changed how the parking was down that we put angle in parking. Changed the sidewalks and the curbs and everything. And that was a phenomenal project. It was really painful for them to go through. The businesses down there were really upset about it for a while because the sidewalks were all kind of like our undergrounding project. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but in the end, when you look at the downtown now and you compare that to what the, what that main drag looked like before she started, it's nice. Very nice. But I think that's the opportunity. It's like everyone was mad at Sandy, Sandy Net for ripping up all their yards when we put fiber in. It would just get you will forget about this in one year. And you, they did. you will never bring that up again. And no one brings up about their flowers got ripped up because they had a trench underneath it or their yard, right? They're all excited about their fiber. Just like the undergrounding project. What a difference if you were to look at pictures before and yeah. look pictures oh. after. It's just night and day different. But whatever we do inside our community too. And how we, you know. But it's not just about redevelopment. There's that aspect of that, you know, but... The market yeah, yeah. analysis is what are we bringing? What are we trying to attract from a retail side of things, right? That's good. I, mean, I want to make sure we're not missing that point of it as we look at these other communities. So there's the economic gardening, which we learned a lot about from uh, McMinnville, which I think would be good to bring to this group too. And with yeah. that relate, especially if we have certain areas of Pleasant Street that are we needing to be re re revitalized, especially with now some of the buildings being torn down. With um, the pool and the Cedar Ridge, but then also down there on Bell Street too. And, and also keep in mind that um, one of the elements in economic development strategic plan is specifically to um, at some point bring the Pleasant Street Master Plan back in front of the council um, for a, a larger discussion about that. Um, I think right now it would be best if we waited until the demos are complete, oh, yeah. the park is complete. Um, but we've got some different ideas about how to make that project maybe a little bit more affordable. So um, that's coming. But I'd love to see this come through and to advise us of what our community wants. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, because we can think about it with the what, seven of us or whatever, you know, and just like, oh, but what is the rest of it, the 13,000 people in our city? But then it, not just there, I hope we're reaching out to outside our area, right? Our market circle, you know, from Welch's to SDK, you know, what they, I mean, because we are the East County hub. Yeah, 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 we will be drawing from a broader market area than than just Sandy when we're considering um, who who's coming here. Um, and I think that it'll be kind of an interesting analysis too, because you serve, you serve East Clackamas County, you serve uh, your, your your residents, which come from a broader area than Sandy, but then you also have your tourism um, that drives through. And and so, you know, some of these market analysis that I've done, that's also, you know, how do you get somebody to stop for one more hour, one more day? Um, and so there's kind of this twofold, you're, you're serving what residents need and then potentially, you know, what, what else might you have that both tourists might enjoy some of the residential stuff, but then other pieces um, as well from a tourism perspective. Yeah, like putting all the superchargers down at Fred Myers. How about a supercharger uh, up here 
by Millennial, the plaza where you can go to the stores because you're stopping for 20 minutes to charge your car. I have a electric car now. I'm, I'm looking at it. So, but, uh, but, you know, where they're placed is, you know, sure. activities that they can go and do. Can they go to the coffee shop? Can they go get food? Can they, you know, is it at the fast food restaurant or is it in our downtown where they can visit our stores or, you know, those type of things, mm -hmm. or coffee or lunch or dinner or those type of things. And as I've taken a long trip now and it, that's what I'm looking for. I'm like, what? Absolutely. So Ben has one right next to uh, the mill, uh, old mill district. The problem is it charges too fast. <laughs> so you drive over there That's and a good problem to have. it was like oh i only have 10 minutes i can't go get <laughs> we're running over there getting it and running back to get because they'll charge so you need idly. less efficient less efficient chargers is what i'm hearing no 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 i'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying closer <laughs> closer to uh things that you know you want to have right like and i think that's something that not because I have an electric car, but I think you're going to see a lot more of those, right? You know, as, as in 20 years, we know that the regulations are making that happen, but uh, and people want them. But you know, how would that factor in to where those are placed or in locations? Because right now they're only at Fred Myers, right? And uh, I mean, Fred Myers is great, but I'd rather go sit and have something to eat or drink or whatever. Why wait then? You know, we'll have one or two at the library here soon to remember to take one from Missouri. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and I've been making pitches for um, electric chargers here too. And uh, my pitches, have, it's been getting easier now that Tyler drives it. <laughs> oh, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah. just uh, something to also think about how that can drive uh, the uh, the commercial areas of what. You know where those are located at, and then what gets put up around them, mm -hmm. vice versa. So, what do you guys think? Um, in in you know from the discussion here we've had so far, um, I've said it before, but Ridgefield sounds very good to me. What do you guys think? It's been five years since I've been up there, so no, no check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been up there, but I do know it's about equal distance away from Portland as a center. Mm -hmm. um, so folks who are commuting to the metro area, it's about the same distance. It's about the same size. I think they were 10,500 at the 2020 census. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they just, don't, they just don't have a highway running through it. Right. You know, the five to go into it. Yeah. But fast growing, similar size, same distance from the metro area, really. Like, I think there's a lot of similarities that, now I've never been to their downtown, so it could be non-existent for all mm -hmm. I know, you know, but people want to live there. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> and uh, they seem to be growing pretty well too. Um, and, you know, uh, Nicole, if you guys say you've got, you, um, Nico's done work up there recently. Not, I, I, I don't think we've done it in Ridgefield. We've been doing a lot of work in St. Helens. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to also just kind of tap some people at uh, Echo as well, just to see if they have some more ideas. Yeah. Um, we might have done some work in Ridgefield. I need to look into it, <laughs> but I, it was, it was something that, um, that Chris did point out and he seemed to think that it's been, um, the downtown has been, been growing quite nicely. Um, so, and I do know from a population perspective, it ha has been growing. A lot of the places just North of Vancouver have been just like, just like Sandy, like in the air population explosion, you know, <laughs> so but I, I'll just I'll just say what I have written down, which we can think about a little bit further is 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 Ridgefield, Lebanon, Estacada, Redmond, Madras, um, Sisters, and then McMinnville. Those are the ones that I've got listed. Great group of cities to choose from. And, and I'm, there's a river. I'm glad you put in. River, yeah. I'm glad you put in um, Madras because uh, driving through it, I've been kind of impressed with what they've been doing to Madras over the last. Uh, Five years or so, they were, you know, and and uh, it's a highway going through it. It's split like we are, a little bit different, but they they have that huge semi traffic semi trucks and going through it as well. And how they've kind of revitalized it. They got a longer couplet than we do. Maybe a bigger downtown aspect of it for sure. But um, they're doing doing some things and attracting some. Uh, Which one is Wild Ride? Is that Redmond or Redmond? Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think Redmond's a great example too uh, for it. Uh, 
Cool. Okay. Well, it sounds like we've got a pretty good, uh, um, pretty good group of uh, cities to choose from. Um, I guess maybe we'll noodle on this a little bit more. And, and uh, Nicole, um, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep in touch. For sure. yeah, yeah. Can we take a field sounds trip? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We can take a field trip. I'm, I'm down. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Nicole. Thank you so much. Yeah, All right. So go from there. I had a question, David, from our last meeting we had. We talked about, um, I think I know the answer because we've been talking about it, is, uh, and we're going to have Lori and Chris go back to city council, are funding this uh, market analysis because it was an unfunded it's like I hadn't heard back after that right so yes. thank you for supporting us and yes. encouraging it but I'm I'm assuming it wasn't a hard sell no, it was, yeah. <laughs> okay right hopefully not a long distance. there was questions about whether they had already done it or not already paid for it and then wasn't that the same questions I brought up yeah. was like yeah. wait a minute <laughs> well nonetheless Chris thank you and, and thank you Council of all of those two for championing that for yeah. the council. That was I, I, that was really important. And thank you for keeping this on the front burner. So well, this is an important thing for us to do. I think you know we tried doing this here before COVID. Um, hopefully that the way. Yeah. Um, and then uh, which I'm glad we paused it all because that would have just been I think a waste of money waste during that time. And and we're coming out of it and we paused I think long enough to where we kind of come out of it and we're. Now adjusting and figuring out what does retail look like? What does our Sandy, what does our community want? As we talked about, and um, we, uh, I think we'll then, perfect time will come out of this and I think ahead of maybe other communities that are trying to refigure out what they're gonna be looking like after COVID. Any other comments? Chris, any comments from you or anybody else here? Well, I'm just really excited about the market analysis, you know, because I've been saying we need retail shopping in the downtown area, you know, for those people who stop and are charging their cars besides just having somewhere to go eat, you know, something else for them to do. So I'm excited to hear the outcomes of this. I think it's great. Any other additional comments? I just had a question. <clears throat> do we, how do they gather data are they just sending out surveys how is this a lot of the way they gather gather data is through surveys um, um some of it is through going through our past reports so they have some numbers to compare to um but yeah most of it they also take in information from around the areas yeah. too and other you know as they go farther outside of sandy um in the past they've had uh meetings at the library i don't know if that was part of the scope or not mm -hmm. like uh, community meetings to bring people in because you know they people like to see boards and talk about things and have that maybe it's here you know stickers on typically i'm assuming that they're going to do the same on that um no i need to talk to them about that um it's not it's outreach not but they're supposed to be doing the outreach yeah. for this mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of the data is also gathered from places like uh, the Census Bureau and the ACH and, and things like that. So like when they determine, um, uh, the, one of the things that I'm most interested in in this report is surplus and leakage. So leakage is when um, you have X demand that you only have like, or uh, you have X supply and like you point seven X demand. And so, or the other way around. So there's more demand and there's supply. That demand will leak out to other communities mm -hmm. uh, because we just don't have the supply. Like right. maybe Gresham um, because they're nearest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I want to know what our citizens are going to Gresham to buy because they can't buy here. Um, and um, so maybe that those are places we can work at recruiting businesses to say, hey, we should. I mean, we have a lot of people that are driving, you know, 15 minutes out of the communities to get the products that we sell because we don't have to. Um, that's a that's a good. Uh, but that's that's the thing I'm most interested in is like last time around we had a surplus of what we back to like but we we had a deficit in growth believe it or not was that before when it was, yeah this, well this is yeah well, this no. is so this is after Christmas. yeah way after Christmas. yeah. yeah. I mean, so if you can believe But we that. had a deficit in women's apparel. Oh, that was, deficit that was apparel like the number one. Do we have any of that? That's so the point. There wasn't any, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we've had like the shop girl consignment, but we business for since then. Yeah. 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 And the other one too. By yeah, and the other one down by five. Yeah. So yeah. it takes, you know, it takes population to support stuff too, right? And, sure. uh, 
And then we also compete against Amazon, to be frank. You know, I wonder how much how many Amazon cardboard boxes leave our community every every week in the recycling bins. I know a lot probably from my house. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's just kind of how the world has changed a little bit. But how do we protect what we have in here and how do we shift? And how do we encourage those with the policies we make and uh, to uh, encourage that to stay here local? Yeah. So the money here locally, it's spent like three times more in the community. Mm -hmm. Good question. Is, this, is a retail market analysis become public mm -hmm. information? Yeah, the last two are posted on. And, uh, and on if Hans Friday. was here, he would tell you, he's told us <laughs> many times, that he used that to go to the bank to be able to get his loan, his business plan, and show that the city did this. So this is not just for, hey, it's fun for us to have as a community and say, and say hey, no, it's actually for people that say, hey, I want to open a business in here. Look at them, but like, what is the needs? And like, hey, I can, look, the, the city just went out and did this study, paid my, they're saying that this is a thing that we need. And, you know, Hans has got a great driving business, COVID hindered it, but he's a great businessman, pivoted a little bit, kept it going. And uh, people travel all over to go to, and I'm like, there need to be a few more out. <laughs> he needs to franchise that. He should, honestly. But, not too close to us because we're yeah. keeper. Okay, we're gonna see. <laughs> so, any other comments? Hearing none, we will close the meeting at 756. It'll give you four minutes. So thank you. Chris, do you always work in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it looks dark in here, but it's really not. It's a little crazy. <laughs> Are you in there? there goes the cat. Good night, everyone. Thank you.